coming from building, you know, just from building your own station and not having funding or doing everything on your own. Um, I've come from using an audio board and an interface. You are now listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. The show is designed to help you grow your mobile app audience and get advice from experts in your industry. Now, here's your host, Sean Garvey. Hey, what's going on, family? It's the architect himself, Sean Garvey, the host of BV Mobile Apps Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you want to learn more information about BV Mobile Apps or if you are in the market of getting your app customized, what are you waiting for? Go to their website right now, bvmobileapps.com. That's bvmobileapps with an S at the end, dot com. Get your app customized today, bvmobileapps.com. On today's podcast, we are going to teach you how to grow your own online radio station. And you heard me mention this a few times before on my podcast, The Beat Break Morning Show. I love talking to radio professionals, and we have a radio expert on the telephone line that is going to help aspiring radio broadcasters and even radio podcasters sharpen their tools on how they can make their online radio station successful. On the telephone lines, we have an engineer at 95.1 FM, Club Step in Chicago, and he's also the producer at Power 104.9 FM, that's WT. SX, which is a nonprofit radio station in Indiana. We have the one and only Elliot, who also goes by DJ Epidemic. How you doing, Elliot? Hey, how's it going? Hey, it is going well, and thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. I can't wait to ask you some great questions so you can provide our listeners some great information. Yeah. We have so much similar interests. Uh, between each other because we grew up in radio. I come from a nonprofit community radio station, and uh, you currently uh, work at a nonprofit radio station. But the interesting backstory to you is that you was a former intern with iHeartMedia. How was that experience like for you um, going into radio for the first time and being a intern or a former intern at one of the most popular radio Kagame industries in the world? So when I signed up to go to school, I was already doing internet radio at home for about a good two or three years at least. So I kind of already had um, a little bit of a head start when it comes to internet radio. And I got my internship at... Uh, I heart here in Chicago and I worked with um, WGCI and their gospel station uh, inspiration 1390 where I did um, primarily most of the work that I did there uh, it it pretty much shaped everything that I do now because I honestly didn't want to do internet radio. I went to school. Uh, originally, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster, even though I've been a DJ for about 15 years before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got into uh, iHeart, and I met a couple other interns, one which, uh, two of which... Well, the, the group that I work, that, that, that I came in with, we're, we all still keep in touch. But uh, out of that group, there are two guys that I uh, talk to uh, heavily. And one of them even works with me on my um, conglomerate of radio stations, of internet radio stations that I, that, that I created. If it wasn't for that internship experience there, I probably wouldn't in all honesty be uh, doing half of the things that I'm doing now. And I'm glad you mentioned that because like you said, you started in radio by going into the internet radio avenue and you worked your way up into going into commercial radio, iHeart media, and you built relationships in that industry, and, and it's so important that uh, people that are in the industry, the mainstream 
for commercial radio industry build relationships and those relationships can take you to the next level. But during your time uh, in commercial radio and you, of course, have gained so much experience working in commercial radio, how did you translate commercial radio into your own online radio station? I look at it now as a blueprint, essentially, because now I can take the the practices and foundation of a terrestrial uh, radio station and apply them to internet radio in a way that would give me a leg up because I kind of don't have to answer to the same authorities as a terrestrial radio station would due to the fact I am not a part of a conglomerate as big as iHeart and the mm-hmm. internet radio, um, I guess, space or area is not really uh, governed the same way as the terrestrial radio station that you get in your car is. Mm-hmm. So essentially it's the best of both worlds because I can take those principles and apply them to uh, my profile and, and get the and get everything and, and still be able to give you listener exactly what they want. Let's talk about the two different sides in radio. There's the business side, which includes sales, ratings, advertisement, that sort of thing. And then you have the other side, which is the technical aspect of radio. I want to talk about the technical aspect of radio. We're hands-on a lot every single day in radio. As a radio professional like yourself... What kind of equipment do you use on a daily basis when you are running a radio show or playing music on the air or running your own online radio station? I use Sam Broadcaster as my automation software, but I have just, you know, I just kind of got put on to a server slash cloud-based system called Cintillacast. Okay. Um, which you can use in tandem with automation software. Um, that is what I use for my uh, group of stations. Um, we, we've kind of moved over to uh, cloud-based software. It is um, it's it's a lot easier for the new wave of digital broadcasting when it comes to podcast distribution, um, which I'm sure we'll, we'll probably touch on um, in, in this interview. Um, but we, you know, like coming from building, you know, just from building your own station and not having funding or doing everything all on your own, um, I've come from using an audio board and an interface with a desktop computer to now having, um, you know, uh, an actual radio station, uh, board and, and, um, uh, you know, sound broadcaster and, and, um, doing things. I, I, I've been doing things mostly digitally uh, for a very long time. And because of my expertise and and learning uh, how to do all that stuff, it kind of got me to, um, like you said, being a part of a terrestrial radio station. And I also want to let our listeners, especially our aspiring radio broadcasters, know that there there are more than just one automation software program. You mentioned Sam Broadcaster. I'm very familiar with Sam Broadcaster, and I have been hands-on with that particular software program. Uh, but there are so many programs that are out there as well, like Audio Vault, Maestro, Wide Orbit. Wide Orbit is my favorite, favorite Thing. It's my favorite automation. With Sam Broadcaster, explain to our listeners a little bit about Sam Broadcaster. Is it as complicated or is it just simple and easy? Both. <laughs> it, it just depends on 
what you're looking to do with it. Um, when it comes to an internet-based platform that's just strictly internet-based, um, it's not really that hard. Uh, there, there are a lot of the, you know, most programs like Station Playlist Creator and Scott Studios and all, all those other uh, programs, they all do the same thing. They just each, they, they have their own terminology for how they do that thing. So um, all it really is is learning what uh, terminology Sam or Spatial uses for their program mm -hmm. and applying those um, those things to what it is you want to do. So when it comes to an internet-based radio station, if you're looking to just, you know, uh, if you're looking to run, uh, you know, podcasts or pre-recorded um, radio shows or, or anything like that, essentially, it's very easy. You can plug and play. You can, um, I shouldn't say plug and play. You can drag and drop and you can, pardon me, you can schedule things for when you want them to play. And now when it comes to using uh, Sam Broadcaster in tandem with, let's say, 95.1 FM, Club Steppin. Mm -hmm. um, we do use it, you know, as part of our on-air plat platform. So, like, our talents use that to go live. We schedule. We create clocks. Um, we use uh, the software to create uh, schedule of events as far as like running our commercials and station IDs. We also use it for uh, linking FTP related material such as um, our afternoon show, which is sent to us via FTP connection. Mm -hmm. um, we're still working on, on, uh, cause we actually, um, broadcast, uh, a very highly rated, um, syndicated radio show in the mornings, but that is sent to us a, uh, a, a box that we plug directly into our audio system. It does not go through SAM. So mm. that is a different situation and that creates its own set of issues. But, but yeah, that is something that mainly goes through terrestrial first and then we adjust, um, our listenership to the, show via our app mm. and um okay and we do it that way so it like i said it just depends on what you what you're looking to do and and what you want to get out of sam broadcaster that will determine if it's going to be something that's very simple for you to use or something that can be just as complex as um uh next gen and that's sam broadcaster ladies and gentlemen if you ever want to actually look at it i would suggest going on youtube and check out some video tutorials of sam broadcaster it's a really pretty good software automation system something to look into for those who are just tuning in to the bv mobile apps podcast we are talking to a radio professional elliot who also goes by the name of dj epidemic engineer at 95.1 fm club step in chicago and he is also a producer at power 104.9 FM, which is a nonprofit radio station in Indiana. Now, we just got through talking about the technical aspect of radio. I want to switch gears and talk about the business side of radio. As I mentioned, you have sales, you have advertising, and of course, the most important thing that broadcasters have to remember is, is all about ratings at the end of the day. But with online radio station, how much business is in online radio station? Is it just as the same as terrestrial radio, or is it a little bit different? It's a little bit different only because, so when you speak to most business um, professionals about advertisement or um, sponsorship, they want to see numbers to you know justify your reach or um your connection with the target base that they're looking to broadcast to uh with internet 
you only have your numbers, essentially. So you have concrete information numbers-wise, which most businesses like. Now, when it comes to a terrestrial radio station, you also have your terrestrial listener base that that's info that you give based off of Nielsen numbers and PPMs. Um, so that's two different sets of numbers that makes it that may make it a little bit harder because your online presence may not um, may only reach so many people, but because you're a part of a legacy radio station or a terrestrial radio station that does very well in um, in a certain market, it may help when it comes to when it comes to um, gaining advertisements or sponsorships. So it's just really uh, the, the the level of of information that you get mm-hmm. and kind of a reputation based kind of thing, like not to sound disrespectful or anything like that, because you know people put a lot more weight into the fact that hey, this is a, a terrestrial radio station that's on the dial. You can listen to it in your car. Um, so it, it holds a little bit more weight as opposed to a strictly internet digital based content related station that you could only get on your phone or computer. Even though now most cars have Bluetooth, which mm. has kind of changed things a little bit. So when it comes to that comparison for sales, um, sales and advertising, it's a, it can be a little bit easier on the terrestrial side as opposed to the digital side, but it can also, you know, it could be in reverse as well. So, it, you know, it just depends on who you're reaching out to as far as who you're trying to get sponsorship with. And that just goes back to, you know, uh, getting or reaching out to people that are, are fit for your product. So we have some people that are listening to us and they want to start an online radio station next week or in two weeks or next month, but they also need that financial support um, to help back their station. So how can one go out and get those sponsors and get those advertisers to financially back an online radio station. Uh, there are so many avenues that are out there, like networking and, of course, social media. How can one do that? And if so, um, how should they go about it? And are there other avenues to getting sponsors and advertisers besides social media and networking? So one thing I would suggest is to have your business in order as far as uh, creating a company, applying for um, incorporation or uh, articles of incorporation or maybe even um, depending on what you want to do. If you want to be a community-based radio station, you could apply for a 501 uh, 3C, which will allow you to, to, to apply for grant money. Or, you know, that's one way you can you can go about that. Uh, you can go, you know, you can you can try and get grants. You can uh, put together a business plan and have proof of concept and speak to, you know, people in in your neighborhood and start there and, and try to get people to buy into your vision and uh, you know go about it that way. You can take a loan out. Um, you could ask family members who believe in you to donate a little bit here and there. You could use your tax money. Like there, there are many, many ways um, to kind of to to, to to do what you want to do. And and I, I mention those ways, and I I say that to say this: you don't need a huge budget to start a radio station. Because once you start it and build it, then you can go after the bigger budget. So there's really no excuse. Even if you put away 50, 50 to $100 out of your check, you know, to, to help with, fi- uh, you know, financing your radio station. 
I say that because Sam Broadcaster has a cloud version that is $27 a month for the basic. You can pay $11 a month for a streamer or for a server. Uh, and then, so that's what? That's the platform. That's the, the actual server that you're going to run your platform on. And right off the bat, that's $38 a month. Um, if you're going to be doing talk radio or just community-based stuff, you don't have to pay for licensing music, so that's a free cost. Um, if you are going to be playing music, if you're going to be playing independent artist music, mm -hmm. um, depending on how that artist has their situation set up, there's probably no cost to occur there. If you want to play mainstream music, you can go to ASCAP and BMI, and they have a digital licensing now that is a yearly base fee that is really not expensive. So when I say things like you can use your tax money or, um, you know, you can sell candy <laughs> door to door, I, you know, I'm not trying to be facetious, but mm -hmm. if, if this is something that you're very interested in and if it's your passion, it really does not take a lot to get started. Um, it's definitely something that you can do if it's what you want to do. And it's very, very um, inexpensive. I want to talk about the radio equipment. I want to go back and touch on something because we mentioned the business side already. We mentioned the software automation to deliver audio uh, to the listeners, what about the actual equipment like your mics, your board, your stands? What do you use for your online radio platform? I just picked up an audio board, believe it or not, via Facebook, um, the Facebook Marketplace. Someone, uh, I guess they had, they had, um, a high school was looking to get rid of all their AV equipment because they were getting new stuff. So they were auctioning this stuff off and I was able to come across a couple things mm -hmm. that uh, I could use for my radio station that I got for really cheap. Um, you can get an audio board from Guitar Center or any local um, music store. I would suggest a USB audio board because then that eliminates an extra piece of equipment. Um, any mics, uh, depending on how you want to sound, you can get very um, inexpensive quality microphones on Amazon that come with the audio cord. You could like you could literally buy a package for seventy five bucks and it it could be the microphone, the mic cord, and the arm that you could attach to your table to make it look just like a regular radio station. So there are deals like that, especially towards now that it's going to be the end of the year with Black Friday and a bunch of other uh, sales coming around. Now would be a great time to start price checking for things. Mm -hmm. and, and you would definitely be able to find those things for relatively cheap. And this type of equipment delivers a clear signal, correct? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You want to make sure that by having a USB audio board or if you happen to get an audio board, a radio station audio board, a console, um, you want to make sure you have a powerful enough desktop computer to run the equipment on then you're pretty much good to go and, and everything will sound nice and clear, you know, and then depending on, on what your format is and, or what you, or what you're playing, you know, the quality of your music, um, will also lend to uh, a good sound for your radio station. Now, Elliot, we only got a few minutes left right here on the BB Mobabs podcast. And I want to know just out of curiosity, what have you done that really worked and what have you discovered that really didn't work while you were building your online radio station? One thing that didn't work for me was um, there's a format 
that is uh it's called like jack fm essentially like the jack of all trades type of uh, deal we in the beginning were a radio station that catered to everyone so we played house music on certain days we had gospel on days we did sports um and we played hip-hop and r&b but everything was it was a hodgepodge of things Mm -hmm. and it that was not it did not work well at all um so one of the things that i did do was specialize essentially like a terrestrial radio station would so now um we focus on uh hip-hop and r&b 24 7 uh, per day we do mix shows um we play we do play podcasts um and certain shows but they're all pertaining to our our genre so um one another thing that i did that um worked out really well was i had a person that interned for me and they did a podcast they did a sports podcast for for our station and one of their uh, hosts took a job with CBS radio and in the middle of school, because at this time when I was building my platform, I was working for the broadcasting school that I graduated from. They were recording. One of the students got a job. They were already working at Radio One in sales and they got an offer to go work for CBS radio if they can get out there in a week. Very, very sharp individual, very dedicated, great guy. Uh, he left, he went to New York. He started working at a community-based radio station in Harlem when he got fired from CBS, because mm-hmm. that's how radio is. And he's doing a whole bunch of stuff, but he connected me to two um, other hosts from that internet radio, uh, not internet, that community-based radio station in Harlem and uh, they do a show that we broadcast that is one of our highest rated shows. Awesome. So um, that was one of the best things that I could have done was to kind of listen to the advice of, of people that had my best interest at heart. So between that and trying not to please everybody, that's pretty much the good and bad of, of what we've done. So the name of your radio platform is Logic Radio. And yeah, it's a uh, Logic Media Group. Okay. And uh I'm sorry to interrupt you. We we have four stations now. Oh, we have three stations. Uh one of them is two of them. One of them is in test mode and the other one is under construction. Tuesday. Okay. So really quick, let our listeners know because it is an understanding that you have your own app where people can listen to your radio station 24-7. And not only that, but you broadcast it at the Nerve DJ 16th anniversary, which was definitely a good look for you. How did both entities, both the app and you broadcasting at the Nerve DJ 16th anniversary, how did those two entities grow your station? So... It's a um, very, very small world. Uh, I am a nerd DJ, um, but I work closely with Big Half. Um, I'm his producer for his podcast that is played in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, with um, me work, I've been working for Half for a couple years, and they have the event every year and I never had the opportunity to go so this year came and I made sure that I had the opportunity to go um, I uh, brought my equipment with me and we were able to um, broadcast live from the event now that helps because we 
uh, now have our face in another market, even though we're a Chicago-based radio station, to our app and um, the ability for us to move around, that put us in a huge, um, they gave us a huge benefit because now they put us in front of a bunch of people that were from not only out of our out of market being in Cleveland, but out of market as in coming from all over the country to be at that event. So meeting those people and introducing them to our platform and and what it is we do help us gain more credibility outside of market, which is something that we would have done sooner or later via advertising or any other uh, thing like that, but helped us uh, quicker because we were able to go out there and touch the people. So that, that helped us immensely. So the app is available for people to go online and download. Uh, how can they get the app? What's the name of the app? And uh, let us know what they can expect from the app. Our app, TV Mobile Apps, it is the Logic Media Group. And the keyword is Logic Radio. That's L-O-G-I-K Radio. You can um, look that up in the Apple and Google Play stores. Um, right now we have our main station, which is Logic Radio, which is our hip-hop and R&B station. Uh, we play majors and minors there. Uh, we have Logic Classic, which is our throwback station with classic hip-hop. Uh, we have a top 40 radio station called The Lawn, but like I said, that's under construction, so that may go um, somewhat of a format change. And um, I am also testing a talk radio show, uh, talk radio station, which I can't give out that information right now, but <laughs> if, uh, you know, once that information is available, I'll be sure to, to post it all out there. Um, I'm also working on adding other formats um, slash radio stations to the app. Okay. Um, like sports, comedy, and Latin. So just to name a few. So make sure you go and get that app today. Go ahead and download it to your phone, and they can get it anywhere. They can get it through BB Mobile apps, of course. They can also get it through the uh, Play Store uh, and other services where apps are available. The App Marketplace also. And uh, contact information. Uh, if anybody have any questions or want to learn more about how to grow their own online radio station, or just general questions like, how can I get my foot in the door at a mainstream radio station like a iHeartMedia or at a 95.1 FM and they want to start out being an intern? Uh, contact information and where can people follow you? People can email me at WLGK, logic, L O G I K, radio at gmail.com. So that's WLGK Logic Radio at gmail dot com. If they have any questions about you know radio or internet or anything like that, they can reach me there. Um, my Twitter is DJ underscore Epidemic uh, E P I D E M I C, and my Instagram is DJ Epidemic, all one word. So we broke down a lot of great information to our listening to our listening audience about how to build and grow your own online radio station and to become successful at it. So we really appreciate the time that you have taken out of your busy schedule to speak to us and we wish you many more success in your online radio endeavors as well as in your endeavors in the radio industry. Thank you so much. I appreciate you um, reaching out and, and giving me an opportunity to be a part of your podcast. We have been talking to Elliot, a.k.a. DJ Epidemic, and he is an engineer at 95.1 FM Club Step in Chicago and producer at Power 104.9 FM WTSX. And he's also a part of the Nerve DJ movement. So make sure you check him out. He's got a lot of big things 
So be on the lookout for some more great things to come. This has been the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. Make sure you follow me on all your social media handles at Sean Garvey on Facebook and at Sean Garvey ATL on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to learn more information about BV Mobile Apps, you can just go to the website right now. That's BV Mobile Apps. Dot com. That's BV Mobile Apps with an S at the end dot com for more information on how you can customize your own app today. This is Sean Garvey signing off from the BV Mobile Apps podcast. We will talk to you all again next time. Take care. It's a new year. It's a new day. I'm starting it over. Starting the day. Thank you for listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. For more information about BV Mobile Apps, visit, visit the, the website, website. bvmobileapps.com. Don't forget to follow BV Mobile Apps on social media at BV Mobile Apps. Tune in again next time on the BV Mobile Apps Podcast.